I want to talk a little bit about, about uh, Rapid Trend Gainer and trading with the trend. Now, Rapid Trend Gainer, the name should give it away, trend, which means we want to trade with the trend. And how we determine the trend? For this example, we're going to use a 100 period simple moving average. It's longer than a 50, shorter than a 200. So we can say it's a little bit more than, than the intermediate. All right. So we got to make some rules. And the reason we're going to cover this is because following the trend is a fantastic way to trade less and also to make a hell of a lot of money if you know what you're doing. Now, a lot of traders look for trading setups. And every product that I've talked about gives you your trading setup. But do not think the trading setup is the most important part. The reason I like these products for it is because the trading setups are simple. Okay? You don't need some complicated, you know, algorithm to give you a trading setup. Van Tharp and Tom Basso did a experiment where a coin flip was how they entered and exited the market. Okay? Or they entered the market. They actually didn't use it to exit the market. So what we're looking at is they just got in that market and it was their risk management, how they managed their risk and how they managed the trade that made them their money. And overall, it made money. Not a ton of money. But it was a winner and most traders will lose so <laughs> to put those in perspective there what we're going to get is we're going to get our objective setup we do not need to learn all these different price patterns we don't need to learn stupid things like kangaroo tail trading candlestick thing you don't need it you don't need it simple price patterns work and rapid trend gainer and all the other ones we talk about they're going to give you what most of you are looking for and that is a trade setup so let's just start here at the beginning of um january just because we're getting to this trading from a downtrend to an uptrend okay so it's going to get a little bit ugly and that's what i want so we're going to use the slope of a moving average the 100 period as our determination of trend why the slope well we certainly can use breaks above and breaks below to give us an idea of our trend direction the problem is if you remember how moving averages work right they are obviously a derivative of price and as price slows down as a volatility in the market slows down and the average of the the price movements on the closing basis shortens price is going to come back closer to the moving average anyhow okay that's the way they work they don't act as support and resistance that is a fallacy it is how moving averages calculate their numbers and how it plots on the screen that gives the illusion that you actually have it acting as support. It doesn't act as anything. It's a line on a screen. Okay, so just keep that in mind. There's nothing magical about these. So we're looking at our, our, our slope. Okay, and how are we going to get out? Well, we can get out two different ways. We can get in with the slope. This is a down trade, so that you can see that this one works for 108 pips. Or we can say, let's just hold on to the trend. Let's just hold on and not be getting in and getting out of the market. So what can we do? Well, we're starting to flatten out here, so this is going to get a little bit confusing for traders. We can say, if I'm in a short trade here and I get a setup to the opposite direction, I can exit my trade. The problem with that is you are going to start where you could potentially get chopped around, okay? Which is not a problem because chop is not necessarily a bad thing. It's just the nature of, you know, trading. And out of chop comes trend. Okay, keep that in mind. So you can make yourself a rule. Okay, you'll get in when the moving average is sloping. So the moving average is, is sloping down. I can get into my trade, but... If price closes on the opposite side of the moving average, you will get out. Well, why will you do that? Well, let's think about that for a second. Why well, I just said that moving averages take the average of X amount of days. Okay, As volatility gets smaller in a market, obviously the average from one day to the next is going to shrink. And price is going to get up close to the moving average. And it's going to pop above sometimes. It's going to pop like it does here. It pops above. But our downtrend is still intact, right? Using our rules of engagement here. So let's get involved in a trade. As long as we're trending, we can see it on obvious slope. And we will get out when price closes above or below 
the moving average. So in this trade here, for example, we get in here, we would get out on the close above, not just the poke through. So we actually take a little bit of a loss here. We take a 32 pip loss on this trade here. Do we go to the upside? You can't, let, let's just do it because it gets ugly, right? Even though this is what we're seeing at the time, right? You can see it's starting to slope up. Keep in mind, we also have this area here, but let's just skip that for now. Let's just keep it even more simple. We get in here. If you just take the profit target, it's 85. If you don't, what's going to happen is you're going to get out right about here on the close for 130 pips lost. It happens. We come back around. Are we sloping up? Yes, we are. Is this a valid trade setup? Yes, it is. We get in here. Okay, so we lost about 100. What did I say here? 100 and so 140. Let's say 145. And then over here, we lost what? 145. We lost 60. Let's just round it up. Let's say we're down 200 pips. Okay, let's say we're down 200 pips. Traders are freaking out, right? We get in here. Remember, we don't get out. So this trade here as if here is up over a thousand pips minus your 200 you're up over 800 pips if you're out here you're up at uh, 1400 pips you had to weather some losses but that is the nature of trading every trading strategy is going to have losses and sometimes these losses can be five six seven in a row you look at van tharp's work it talks exactly about that it doesn't matter your win percentage yeah it's one thing but you are going to get a string of losing trades that's just the nature of the business. And it's not unheard of to get 13 losers in a row. Not unheard of. It happens. Look at Van Tharp's work. And it talks about that. Actually, I think I have a, a, a graphic. One sec. I was looking for it. I'm going to attach it at the end of this video. Uh, you see, I don't have an internet connection, which is kind of stupid. This happened yesterday as well, around the same time. Let's get back to our chart, but I'll bring it up at the end of the video. So we have this. So all we did was follow the trend. And yes, you can use these to get in and out of your trades. But if you notice, you're in, you're out, you're in, you're out. Spread cost, spread cost, spread cost, spread cost. Okay. This trade is still active. Now, it, it might close underneath here and you may not get that run that you're looking for, but you're up over 960 pips, right, for the year on the uh, Euro US dollar daily chart. And you haven't done anything with it since April is when you got in this trade and all you did was you held on to it. That is all you did with this trade. You you got into it. Over here it got sloppy for the first little part of the year. Trend took off and you did nothing. You maybe you checked it when obviously you don't, you don't need to check it when it's way up here cuz it's so far away. And for traders that are a little bit, you know, don't like to give too much back, I would not necessarily do this. Just pop on a 50 and say, okay, well, if it breaks below my 50, I'm going to get out. You can certainly do that. Okay, it's up to you how you're, how you're going to do this. This letting price come back to the 100 may be a little bit too much for some traders to take. And if that's the case and you got out with the 50, this trade here in the close, you know, you made 1,209 pips on this one trade here. It's not bad, right? It's actually pretty good. And these losses here would be a little bit smaller. But remember, what's happening here, because we're getting into a change in the trend direction, the 50 is going to start getting closer to price, right? Faster than the 100 will. So you would short this market here, okay? But here's the problem. Price is already above the 50. So that for you could be a, a filter where you don't, take this trade at all because this is what's happening with the price over here you would take this long trade and you would get out and you still take a bit of a loss 65 pips okay so that's another way you can look at this as well as long as your 50 hasn't been hasn't doesn't have price above it you would still take that trade this is where it gets dicey i like to keep my trading as simple as possible as simple as possible because I know that it's over time, it's how I manage my risk. That's what I know. And my position sizing. But this is a nice, no-brainer way of trading this strategy. 
It's giving you what you want, which is your objective entry point. And most traders, that's what they want to see. They look at price patterns. That's why, you know, some marketers out there, uh, you know, they made so much money off of one a stupid candlestick. And believe me, that one candlestick does not really have an edge in the market. There's no edge there. But it was marketed as such, and people bought into that. Your setups are not the most important thing. Your position sizing is. Where are you going to place your stop on this trade? If you use this stop here, because you've got to put a stop in, even though we're going to get out of the market on a trailing stop, which is basically a close below here for this example here, you still got to place a stop. And you certainly can't you know, say, well, I'll get in here. I'm not going to place a stop. I'll wait till it closes below it. Well, you can't because you don't have a, you can't position size properly. So you need to find a way to place your stop. You can use these stops. You can use an ATR stop. You can use anything you want as long as it doesn't put you right on top of the market action. And a lot of traders do that. A lot of traders come into the trading business and they are undercapitalized. So what they do is they keep a tight, tight stop so they can get a larger position size so the winning trades actually make more. The problem is with those kind of, that kind of idea, you are not taking into account the random nature, the noise that happens in a, in a market. And you're getting popped out of your trade and then the market's going on its merry way. It's happened to all of us because your stops are too tight. Anyways, pick up Rapid Trend Gainer. This same idea is going to work on the other one, Pips Wizard Pro. It's not, I haven't looked at it in terms of the scalping. Scalping is in and out, right? I like the using the, uh, the one minute and the five minute chart combination for that. It's a good way of trading that. But if you're looking at Pips Wizard Pro, I'm not going to go through it right now, but if you're looking at Pips Wizard Pro, it's the same idea, same idea, using the 100 period slope and getting out when price breaks above it. That's just taking into account the volatility in the market and an objective setup that trend, Rapid Trend Gainer is going to give you. Click above, download it, get your own, and uh, we'll talk soon.